Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about tracing points. Let's say that we were given a function f of x equals x squared. That's a very standard parabola. And for whatever reason, we were very, very interested in this point 2 comma 4, and we want to know what happens to this point at all times. Now let's say we were given a second function, g of x, that takes f of x and transforms it in such a way that it'll move it 2 units to the right and 3 units upwards. So f of x minus 2 to the right, um, plus 3 on the outside, that'll move it upwards. The equation for this will be x minus 2 squared plus 3. And I was interested in what happens to this point after it's been transformed by g of x. So let's draw a quick sketch of what g of x might look like. Uh, let's identify the transformations. First of all, this was 2 to the right, and then three units upwards. Let's label this transformation one, transformation two. Now I'm gonna take this point and apply these transformations in this exact order. So let's say I have two comma four after transformation one. Two to the right, that means I'm gonna add two, two units to the x coordinate, turning to four comma four. And then three units upwards, that would be adding three units to the y coordinate. This will be four comma seven. And this point, this final point, we know for sure will be on the one, two, three, four, uh, resulting parabola that we have transformed. And we can double check that this is correct by plugging it back into g of x. So plugging it back into g of x, we get g of four should be equal to four minus two squared plus three. This is two squared plus three, which is indeed seven. And this verifies that our trace point was correct. Okay, next let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Let's say we were given x cubed this time, and we were interested in the point 2 comma 8. And this can be any point. Um, we don't always have to have the x equal to 2. Uh, now let's say that we had g of x that takes this. We have 2 f of x minus 3 plus 1. And the resulting equation will be 2 times x minus 3 to the third power plus 1. I'll, uh, uh, this time, I'm not going to graph it, and we'll just trace the point. So let's identify all the transformations here. In the y transformations, we have two of them. The first one is going to be vertical stretch by a factor of 2, and then we will move it one unit upwards. For the x transformations, the only one is three units to the right. Right. So it doesn't really matter which order we do the x and y transformations uh, because they're independent of each other. So let's, uh, let's do y transformations first then. The first one, let's call this a, b, and c. If I apply transformation a, vertical stretch by two, this means take the y coordinate and double it. So I'll have 2, comma, 16. Uh, let's apply the second y transformation. We'll be moving it one unit up. And this will be 2, comma, 17. And finally, apply my c transformation, which is my x transformation. So 3 units to the right. That means add 3 to the x, so 5, comma, 17. And let's double check that this is indeed traced correctly. So I'll take this point, plug it into g of x. So g of 5 will be equal to 2 times 5 minus 3 cubed plus 1, which is equal to 2 times, this is 2 cubed, which is 8 plus 1, and this is indeed 17. So we have checked that our answer is correct. Alrighty, so for our third function, let's take a look at sine of x. So I'm going to pretend that we're interested in the point pi over 2 comma 1, and I had a function g of x equals negative 2 f of 2x plus pi minus 1. So the equation for this is going to be negative 2 sine of 2x plus pi minus 1. All right. Uh, if I was looking at this, let's list out all the transformations. So we have x from transformation, y transformation. The first one for y is going to be a vertical stretch <laughs> by a factor of negative 2. And then we're going to move it one unit down. So one down. For my x transformation, 
I have two here. One of it is 2x, that's gonna be horizontal compressed by 1 half, and then plus pi, which is pi units to the left. Remember, for x transformations, it's the opposite of what, we're, what we do to y. So the first one we do is going to be shifted pi to the left. We always, we always shift for x before we uh, stretch it. And then the next one is going to be horizontal compression by 1 half. So let's label this transformation A, B, C, and D. So now I'll take my point and apply all four of these transformations. After the first one, vertical stretch by a factor of negative 2, that means take the y value, multiply by negative 2, I get pi over 2 comma negative 2. Apply transformation B, move it one unit down, this is going to give pi over 2 comma negative 3. Apply transformation C, pi units to the left, so I take my x-coordinate, subtract pi from that. Pi over 2 minus pi is negative pi over 2, comma negative 3. And finally, transformation D, horizontal compression by 1 half. Take my x-coordinate, multiply by 1 half, and I get negative pi over 4, comma negative 3. And here's my final answer. So as always, we get into a good habit of double-checking our answer. Let's plug this back into g of x. So I'm interested in what is g of negative pi over 4. If we calculate this, this is going to be negative 2 sine of 2 times negative pi over 4 plus pi minus 1. On the end side, this is going to be negative 2 sine of 2 times negative pi over 4 is negative pi over 2 plus pi is positive pi over 2 minus 1. As we all know, sine of pi over 2, well, that's right here. Sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, so this is negative 2 times 1 minus 1, and we get 3 back. So yes, this does confirm our answer.